I first heard uh, Kevin Turf's story as part of the show Come From Away. Uh, I had the honor of seeing the show in D.C. when it was in previews at Ford's Theater in 2016. I had not heard about him until we brought him to campus as a speaker. I managed uh, to somehow avoid becoming aware of the wonderful Broadway play on this topic or about his personal story. I had seen news reports somewhere of the incident of travelers being stranded on 9-11 um, in small towns around the world and cared for, but I didn't know Kevin's particular story until we invited him to campus and then I got to find out a little bit more about it. I would highly recommend him as a campus visit. He was engaging, inspiring, uh, friendly to students, and really um, made a big impact on campus. I think he is a thoughtful person who had a profound experience on 9-11, followed through on what it meant to him, and then is now giving back to help us all think about uh, what it means to care for other people. I think he was a really valuable speaker for us. Um, for many of the faculty and staff, we can never forget what happened on 9-11. But as I learned when I asked my students, um, our first year students were infants or toddlers on 9-11. And I think it's valuable for them to get to understand what a watershed, sea-changing moment that was in American life. And what better way to understand that than by hearing the narrative of someone who went through something um, distressing and yet ultimately hope-giving on that day. It made me remember uh, where I was at 9-11 and that same uh, impact that that had on, on my thoughts uh, at that time. And it made me uh, remember again that so many of us, uh, friends, family, and strangers alike, shared this experience in which uh, we came together as a nation, uh, expressed our care for each other, and our desire for a safer world. Fast forward to one year later, 2002, and I was at my company, environmental marketing company in Austin, Texas, and, um, and I was really struggling. You know, would we do the same? It's really um, the way they act in, uh, in Canada and what they were doing there were perfect examples of the golden rule. Who can tell me what the golden rule is? Yeah, I hear you all saying it. Tell us real loud. The way you want to be treated. Right, treat others and the environment the way you want to be treated. Um, the golden rule, by the way, is I just learned this recently. The golden rule is uh, part of almost every major religion in the world. It's one thing that unites us. But interestingly, I went with my doppelganger, the actor Chad Kimball. We went for International Golden Rule Day, April 4th. We went to Central Park in New York, and there's people from all over the world there, and we interviewed them. We said, simple question, what's the golden rule? And would you believe it, not one out of, only one out of three people could get the answer right. Mm -hmm. Most of these, and these were not young people, these were old people, you know, from all over the world. So it says something about people understanding that golden rule that's supposed to be so prevalent. So on the first anniversary of 9-11, I decided I want, I, they, they said, our, you know, your debt is paid in full, no thanks are necessary, necessary, so I couldn't go back to thank them. It was too far, so I couldn't pay them back, so I decided to borrow an idea from the book and movie Pay It Forward by Katherine Ryan Hyde. And so what I did was I closed my office on every anniversary of September 11th, and I handed out $100 bills to my employees and had them go do random acts of kindness to strangers. And so what I did was I instructed them, tell, go tell people, we said we would never forget. For those of you that were you're too young you, and you don't know, but it was hashtag never forget. It was everywhere across America. You saw those words, never forget. And here we are 17 years later and we are forgetting. So it was important to remember there were 2,977 souls that perished that day here in Pennsylvania, in New York, in Washington, D.C. So reminding people about that, but then telling this wonderful story about the good side of humanity, which also happened. 
So just to give you, and in the book, there's the best of 15 years of doing this program. And some of them are super simple, and you can try it on any day, not just 9-11. But buying a coffee for a stranger is, you know, if you've never done it before, you should try it. Um, people will look at you like this woman looked at me like I was nuts. And, but she said, well, no one has ever done this for me before. She was so amazed. And so I bought, I put $50 down at this coffee bar. So I want to buy as many coffees as this will pay for. And then I explained the premise of what we were doing. And then I asked people to pay it forward, go do something nice for somebody else today. So the money that she was gonna use on her latte, she immediately went and she found a homeless person two blocks away and gave that money to him. Some other uh, examples include a family that made it an annual tradition. They would go visit first responders. First responders are obviously every September 11th is a day of anxiety. You never know if another terrorist attack is gonna happen. And uh, so for this family, they took their young girls to the Pflugerville Fire Department, which is outside of Austin, brought them uh, lunch sometimes, sometimes cookies, just simple things to tell them we remember, we have not forgotten, and we know that you're important. And then another example, uh, often it was uh, people would call schools and they would, uh, we would call a school and say, hey, we've got a team of two, we usually divide people up and say, they'd say, we have $100, we'd call a principal, what, what, could, what can we do with that? And this one, school in Austin, Texas, low-income school, they said, um, gosh, two young kids from our school, they had their bicycles stolen yesterday, and their parents cannot afford to buy new ones, and it takes them now walking 45 minutes each way to get to school, so if there's any way you could help, that would be great. So it turns out two bikes cost a little bit over $100. This employee dipped into his own pocket, paid for the other bike, the bikes are delivered within three hours, problem solved. This is one of my favorite stories. Uh, the second or third year in Austin, uh, we were doing all this anonymously, but somebody forwarded my email around and other people wanted to do it. They just, the, the ripple effect was like, we wanna do this too, we want something positive on September 11th. And so the newspaper published an article which said something special could happen to you today. It wrote about, it found some people from the previous year who had been the recipients of our $100 random acts of kindness. And so I get a call about four o'clock on my voicemail at the office and this man says, Kevin, you don't know me, my name is Vincent. He said, I was having a horrible day today. I had a flat tire. And you know what happens, you have a flat tire, you're in a bad mood, and so this guy goes here to Leal's Tire Shop in East Austin, and uh, when he goes to pay for it, he said, when I went to go pay for it, it was paid for. And, I, and someone told me uh, this woman had paid for it. And uh, now here I am, hours later, I'm reading the newspaper, and it says something special could happen to you today. He said, and it did. He said, I had no idea this happened. It occurred to anybody, what you're doing is very kind. And then his voice gets choked up, and he says, what you did changed my life. And I hung up the phone, and I thought, wow, you know how much it cost to change that guy's life? Seven dollars. Mm -hmm. For seven dollars to pay for that flat tire to be repaired, it changed his life. I think the easiest way any of us, any of us can pay it forward is just small random acts of kindness. I mean, as a college student, there's not really, you know, a lot of opportunity to use large sums of money to do this or do that, but there are always smaller things we can do, whether it's paying for someone's gas to gas station, buying someone's food for them, other small things you can do that don't require large sums of money, and just general everyday kindness. Here's the way I think I do that, honestly. I had in my life professors who were tremendously kind to me, who gave me more of their time than was needed, who cared more about me and my interest than was required, who took me to coffee and lunch more often um, than I even asked. I try to pay it forward by doing the same. Um, in fact, I saw one of my college or graduate school advisors uh, last fall and said to him how grateful I was for his investment in me. 
And he said literally to me, pay it forward. So I try to do that. I try to invest time in getting to know students and caring and mentoring them. And also I try to, when I can, um, I, I will several times a semester, you know, go to lunch or coffee with a student and I try to pay. And uh, every once in a while the student will resist me buying him or her a cup of coffee uh, and I get to say, no, really, like, I worked a long time to get to this place in my life where I can buy coffee. And lots of people bought me coffee uh, when I was in your place, so please, let me. Um, that's how I, I do that, and it's really nice to do. I think the thing I took away most wasn't actually from the talk, although that was fantastic in every sense of the word. It was what I saw immediately afterwards. I was helping Kevin to sell his books, I was running the little swipe credit card reader on his phone, and there were a good number of people who paid in cash, you know, faculty and staff and students and members of the community. And Kevin had forgotten to get change, he didn't have any change. Books are fifteen eighty-five, and all these people are paying with 20s, and they're just telling him don't worry about the change keep the change and pay it forward. Don't worry about the change, just pay it forward. And these are, you know, broke college students in a lot of cases. It actually wasn't about the 9-11 incident. What I took away was what I noticed some of our students respond to, which was a minor point in what he said. A long way of telling his story, he revealed that he is a gay man in a committed relationship and a member of a Catholic church. And I watched some of our students really tune into that. And in talking with those students afterward, I learned that they have not had many instances where they've seen um, people be LGBTQIA and feel welcomed and at home in a religious community. And so for some of our students, that, more than anything he said about kindness or the golden rule or 9-11, that idea that religion could be welcoming, that Christianity could be welcoming to people, of all people, including people with all varieties of sexuality. That alone was very affirming for some of our students and very eye-opening. And that's what stuck with me, is seeing how affirming it was for some of our students to hear that and see that. I think the root of it just comes down to the question Kevin likes to ask, a question I heard him ask quite a bit between dinner the night before his talk and the lunch and afterwards. Would we do the same if some world-shattering tragedy were to happen in, say, Canada that forced them to close their airspace? Would we take in people just as welcomingly, just as kindly, just as selflessly as the people of Gander did? And it's a tough question to answer because Canadians, you know, stereotypically they're very nice, very polite people, but what the people in Gander and what the people in other towns across Canada who took in flights such as Halifax and Toronto, what they exhibited was a compassion that's almost inhuman in its wide-reaching generosity, in its kindness, in its welcoming nature. And with the United States in the place where it is at the moment, so divided, so partisan, so tribal, and in some ways so nasty, there are parts of me that would like to say, yes, we would do the same. But there are parts of me that also want to say, probably we wouldn't. And so I don't want to seem like I'm doomsaying by any means, not at all. The simple fact of the matter is, what happened in Gander on September 11th and September 12th, 13th, 14th, 15th, 16th, until the last people left when the U.S. airspace was reopened, was 
astronomical. It was, I honestly think, one of the greatest stories of compassion and kindness of our time. Well, again, um, the opportunity to have someone come and visit a campus um, is, uh, is a real privilege. And Kevin was able both to give a compelling public lecture, interact effectively with students and other people in smaller settings, and, and share, a, share his story with us, but also listen to our story. Uh, and so, again, I would highly recommend him as a campus visitor, as a speaker, and as a person that really cares about the world around him.